Hi. Now, if you'd like to have a go at this question on finding a sampling distribution, just give you a moment to pause the video in case you haven't seen this question before. And when you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So we've got to find the sampling distribution then for the range of the numbers on the three selected balls. So let's just define a random variable. I'm just going to say let r be that random variable. So let r be the random variable, rv for short, and it's going to be the range. Okay, so what I want to do next is put down the three numbers that we could find when we select the balls, the three balls from the bag. And if we're systematic about this, then let's say we start with all three of them are ones, okay? And then next, let's say one of them is a two. So we've got, say, one, one, and then we draw a two. And now I'm just going to slip the two down into the other position. So you could get one, two, one, and then you could get two, one, one. All right. What else could we have? Well, we could have two of them being two. So let's say we put the first one as one and then we get two and two and then just move this one through the row here. So we get two, one, two and then we get two, two, one. And what else could we have? Well, they could all be 2. So we've got 2, 2, and 2. So let's have a look at this random variable r. What values can it take for the range? Well, for this one here, the range r will be equal to 0. Difference between the highest and lowest values. Now, for each one of these, the lowest value is 1, and the highest value is always going to be a 2. So the range here will be 2 take away 1, which is 1. Similarly, for this one, the lowest value is 1, the highest value is 2, so the range here is going to be 2 take away 1, which is 1. And in this last one, all the values are the same, so the range is going to be 0. So... Let's now have a look at working out our distribution table. Our observed values for the range are going to be 0 and 1. So we can have 0 and we can have 1. And we're looking at the probabilities now of our random variable for the range being equal to any of these observed values. I only need to work out one of them, and then I can subtract it from one to get the other one. So let's say we look at the probability of the range being equal to the observed value zero. So that's going to be the case when we have this one and we have this one. So getting all ones, okay, that's going to be 0 0.65, 0 0.65 all cubed. And then for the twos, we've got three of those, so that's going to be plus 0 0.35, and that's going to be cubed. Work that out in your calculator, and you get the value 0 0.3175. So I can put that in there as 0 0.3175, and then if I take this away from one, I get 0 0.6825 for the probability that the range is 1. Much less work doing it with the zeros, isn't it, than having to work out with all of those ones. Okay, so hope it's given you some idea then how to do that.